It's time to react to another story, and today I am talking about one from March 6, 2021, a feature story on Luther the Cat at Windmill Brewing in Dyer, Indiana. I read this story on Madison.com, but it was originally posted in the Northwest Indiana Times. Windmill Brewing, not a sponsor, needed a cat to help protect their barley and wheat from rodents. In comes Luther, a cat from a local rescue. Luther was chosen for the brewery because the rescue didn't think he was adoptable due to his demeanor around people. So the brewery took in Luther in December 2016. It only took a few months uh, before Luther started to cuddle in people's laps and meet everyone in the tap room. And while that meant that the six or seven year old cat might have been neglecting his original job, it didn't mean that he wasn't an integral part of the brewery. The brewery ended up using Luther in branding and marketing. Uh, they named a couple beers after him. Uh, they, they made pins and T-shirts and things like that. Uh, it, you know, they don't serve food. So Luther was able to wander around the tap room uh, in the daytime at will so he just could go right up to people and he started cuddling in their laps luther of course still lives at the brewery he also has a social media following and has been featured on the cats on tap instagram account i'm sure he still catches the occasional mouse but obviously luther evolved into so much more and that got me thinking about breweries and cats uh, there's a 2017 book I just found uh, by Brad Thomas Parsons called Distillery Cats, Profiles and Courage of the World's Most Spirited Mousers, that features 30 cats that work in breweries and distilleries all over the United States, including Empirical Brewery in Chicago, uh, which at one point had four cats named Vankman, Ray, Egon, and Gozer from the Ghostbusters, of course. Gozer sadly passed away since the book was released, unfortunately, but the other cats are still there. Many of the cats in the profiles in the book also became lovable. Uh, they, they love to get pets from humans, and they almost became a brand of those breweries as well. But the main point of taking them in was to help protect the grain by being rodent control. And this isn't something that just happened in modern times. It isn't a stretch to believe that ancient cats were used to protect ancient breweries like the one recently discovered in Abydos, an ancient burial ground in the desert west of the Nile River and about 280 miles south of Cairo. In an associated press story in February, we learn that archaeologists discovered an ancient Egyptian beer factory, which dates back to the first dynastic period, 3150 BC to 2613 BC. They found eight units here. 65 feet long, 8 feet wide, each with approximately 40 pottery basins placed in a couple of rows. The basins are thought to have been used to heat up water and grains together to produce wort. That wort, of course, would turn into beer after the fermentation process, which back then would have just been leaving the wort out and let the wild yeast do the job. The discovery was made uh, on a project co-chaired by Dr. Matthew Adams of the Institute of Fine Arts at New York University and Deborah Vishak, who is an assistant professor of ancient Egyptian art history and archaeology at Princeton University. And of course, what this means is that the beer factory would have been harvesting many pounds of grain in order to make enough gallons of beer for royal rituals, which is what Adams said was one of the reasons why the factory would have existed in the first place. Uh, we also know that humans and cats started to partner up in ancient Egypt. Humans left out fish parts. Cats rewarded the humans by catching rodents who would have eaten their food and crops, especially stored grains. There is also the association, of course, moving past ancient Egypt to the 15th and 16th century with beer and cats. And of course, we're talking about paintings and drawings depicting witches cooking potions in a cauldron with cats nearby. Well, these so-called witches were actually just making beer, of course, because back in those times, women dominated the brewing industry. Oh, man, it's controversial things going on here. They were called alewives. In a Smithsonian Magazine article published on March 8th uh, during International Women's Day just a couple days ago, it is stated that when the Spanish Inquisition began in the 16th century, male brewers used it against women, starting rumors that the female brewers were witches making magic potions. They wanted less competition, and this is where we get spooky paintings and, and drawings of witches stirring cauldrons with cats nearby. It didn't take long before it became dangerous for women to make beer. Uh, with many wrongful 
uh, executions, of course, and we now know that women had cats near their cauldrons, not for some magic spell or that the devil was involved, but because the cats were protecting the grain from rodents. So coming full circle and back into modern times, stories like the one in Dyer, Indiana, show us another reason why cats and humans can get along so well. I definitely think stories like Luther the Cat are great, and I look forward to hear more tales of felines at breweries in the future. And I look forward to possibly meeting some of them when this pandemic is finally over. Thanks for watching. Any articles and other information discussed in this episode will be linked in the description in case you also want to read or discover yourself. Please like and follow my Instagram account for more of my thoughts on arbitrary stories like this and other content. Also watch out for the future launch of the Sun-Dried Tomatoes podcast and YouTube channel in the near future where I will have even more eclectic content.